friendship, betrayal, catharsis, balloons. I was good. I promise you, I was good. I was a seasoned financial advisor for more than 20 years. I had several degrees and certifications on my wall and more were planned. My caseload was large. It's a big responsibility to advise people how to invest, how much to save, what is spendable right now, and how to achieve their financial goals. This story is about one client. There's always one client, don't you know? She was a special friend, really a part of my family. She was a doctor, an OBGYN, I'll call Nicole. Early in her private practice, she set goals of being financially independent by age 50. She wanted to help spend time helping her fellow Haitians, especially students, get ahead. So we worked on it together. It was a special time in my life. There were regular meetings to discuss the details of her investments. She's very, very conservative. We evaluated her goals and her progress and made changes when needed. We became friends. She became a friend of the family. So regularly I held dinner. We had dinner parties at my house. And we had eight to 10 people over for dinner because I really loved to cook. And often Nicole was a guest. She had such interesting stories of how she got to the States, her family members that were spread all over the East and how she got into medical school and all in her French accent that just enchanted us. One party was especially memorable to this day because she, talk to us about the friend she made while she was in medical school. A cadaver she called Charlie. So we heard the details, too many details at dinner time. And to this day, we remember and laugh about our horrified reactions. She was used to talking to doctors, but we were not at all doctors. Over time, it was time for us to have a family, my husband and I. So I helped my client, Nicole, with her goals of buying a home. I helped her figure out how to afford one. And she, we wanted a family, but we couldn't conceive. So she directed me to the pathway to manage infertility. And eventually, I will say after 13 years of prayer and thanks to God, I got pregnant. But there were problems, of course. Well, maybe not, of course, but anyway, I had a dangerous blood pressure problem that couldn't be controlled by medicine, and they put me on bed rest for six months. Do you remember the last time you had even one day in bed or a week? Well, just imagine six months of being in bed. And being pregnant meant I couldn't lie on my back or my stomach so for six months, I rolled from one side to the other side for a change in position. I was so grateful. I was extremely grateful to be allowed to shower every morning and use the bathroom instead of a bedpan. Oh gosh, that would not have been, no. Okay, anyway, at that time I was the primary breadwinner for a family and there was nothing wrong with my brain. So I continued to care for my clients using the phone and the computer from my day bed in the living room. We held our review meetings either on the phone or in the living room. So for many, many years, my work from home office, I set it up about 15 years ago and my clients were used to coming to my home. So it was no big deal when they walked in the door and looked to the around the great room to see the design changes I'd made, I love to decorate, and stepped in through the doorway to the left of my office. Well, now during that time when they came in for their review, it was an easy shift to go straight into the living room and uh, sit there instead of in my office. So it was challenging, but it worked. 
there were such times I can't even begin to tell you. Well, there's a concept of a person, a helper person called a doula. And a doula helps, is a trained professional who provides continuous physical, emotional, and informational support to a mother, that would be me, before, during, and after childbirth to help her achieve the healthiest and most satisfying experience possible. So my friend Nicole stepped up to help me in the doula role. By that time, she was transitioning out of the OBGYN work and referred me to her colleague for care. At the 32-week mark, I said, Dr. Jemison, when is this baby going to happen? And she replied, I don't know. I didn't think you'd even make it until now. Can you imagine hearing those words? Thunk went my heart. I didn't realize there were doubts about having a successful pregnancy. Was I scared? Of course I was scared. My circle of family and friends came often to visit and bring food or to help with something at the house. And time passed so slowly. Nicole was often present as my doula. And finally at the week 32, they induced labor. And on November the 16th, a healthy baby boy slid out. Natural birth, yay. I felt such immense gratitude and joy. Soon I got up from bed rest and continued serving my clients as before. They had their regular reviews, conservative and well-diversified portfolios and were on their way to meeting their longer term goals. And as the years passed, Nicole attended each birthday party to celebrate my son's birthday. Until right after his fifth birthday. One Friday afternoon, late afternoon, I get a call from Nicole and she said, with no warning or conversation, she said in her French accented English, Sharon and I am terminating our relationship. I couldn't believe my ears. What? And she repeated the exact same words. I am terminating our relationship. You'll be getting transfer paperwork in the mail. Slap in the face. Push me over tripped me up as calmly as I could. I said, I am in the middle of something right now. Let's talk on Monday. And I hung up. I didn't even want the details. I didn't want an expl explanation. I didn't want anything. I spent the weekend, the weekend mourning this relationship. Fortunately, I just finished reading, uh, rereading Elizabeth Kubler Ross book on the stages of grief. And this had to do with the death of a loved one, but, but this was my friendship that had died. So I decided to allow my feelings, the feelings of denial, disbelief, bargaining, anger, sadness and depression, and finally acceptance. And for the entire weekend, I spent going through our past relationship, going through my actions with Nicole, no, Nicole and to see if I did anything that I thought was not right and how she had helped me over the years. And I cried and I just, went crazy that weekend, just allowing the feelings. And finally, I, by Sunday afternoon, I decided I needed a closure ritual for Monday, our conversation on Monday, and went to the store. Oh, 
I had written a letter expressing all my feelings and I uh, started a fire in the fireplace and I tore it in shreds and I burned up the letter. And then I went to the store and got some helium balloons. <clears throat> and on Monday I called and said, hey, let's meet up at the park. So we met and we walked around the park and I said, well, tell me everything you have to say. And um, we walked three times around the park and she told me and I just said, mm-hmm, uh-huh. And she kept talking, mm-hmm. And she kept talking and we kept walking, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at the end, when she ran out of talk, I said, are you finished? And she said, yes. And I said, well, come to the car. I have something for you. So we went to my car in the back of my Jeep. I had stuffed these helium balloons and I pulled one out on a string and I said, well, this is for the time that you helped me this way. And this is for the time that you helped me that way. And I gave her 10 gratitude balloons and I thanked her. And I said, goodbye, Nicole. And my last sight of her was she held the balloons, she dropped her head and she slowly walked away. I was done with it. And I'm here to say that we can survive the hard times. We can go through the harsh times. We can survive and then we can thrive. And then these times make stories for us to build on to a better and stronger inside of us and outside of us. A, a better, more joyful journey. It would not have been good for her, for me to try to hang on to her, even though she represented and her money represented a good chunk of my annual income. It wasn't worth it. I'm here to let you know it's okay to feel all the feelings in the good times and the bad times, because that's what we're made for. We're made for feelings. And if you need a guide to help you through the hard times or any change. I mean, we feel all these feelings when we change away from the career we built all those years and to step into retirement that I don't really believe in. Just, it's just a, a door through into another life. What are we here to create? What are we here to build? What are we here to give? In my work, my service to my clients is to teach you how to go through this and step into the joy of the journey, wherever you are, however old you are, it doesn't matter. It's about mindset and it's about how you decide to go forward. So I'm a guide and I'm happy to help you. Conversation doesn't cost a thing. Give me a call, give me, send me a message and we'll chat.